So hello. Okay, let's just adjust that a little bit. So I'm hoping I'm live. As always, I'm going to have a quick check and see if I can see what you can see. Gosh, it's such a lovely afternoon here after the gales and rain of last night. I can't quite believe how nice it is. Okay, let's have a quick look. It looks as if I'm live. Excellent. Good, good. Mary's here. Hello, Mary. Welcome, welcome. Okay, let me just try and set this so I can see all the comments. Okay. Right, I think that's balanced. I don't think it's going to fall over and knock over my cup of tea. Oh, Belinda's here. Hi, hi, Belinda. Nice to have you. Okay, last time I did one of these lives last week, I seemed to be scarily close to the camera when I looked at it afterwards, so I've moved back a little bit. Um, hopefully, that's a little bit better because, you know, you can have too much of a good thing, can't you? You don't need to see all my lines and wrinkles and, uh, and grey hairs. Roll on Thursday in the hairdresser. I'm so excited. It's over five months since I've had my hair done. Can't wait. Okay, so it's the day that the new annual catalogue launches. Um, you can order from it now. Um, I've placed an order this morning for some things that I wasn't allowed to order early, so I'm very excited about that. Um, I'm really looking forward to playing with lots of new things, and today is all about the new colours as much as anything. Um, I get very excited by colour. I absolutely love having new colours to play with, um, to see how they work with colours I already love, to see how they work uh, in different combinations, and to choose some new favourites. Um, I already have a, a particular favourite of the new ones, but that may change over time, we'll see. Um, Pam is here, she says hello to everyone. And Mary says hello to everyone, as does Belinda. Don't worry about a few typos, Belinda, not a problem. Um, so what I'm going to plan to do is, first of all, it will probably take a little bit more than my usual hour for lives, but I'm going to do a quick whiz through the catalogue, make sure you know how to find the things that you might be looking for, and show you some of my absolute favourite things. Um, I'm going to show you the new colours, I'm going to compare them with colours we've already got just so you can get a feel for um, how they sit. Um, I'm going to show you those colours actually used in some projects, which I think always looks a little bit different, doesn't it, to just seeing a sheet of card. Um, I'm going to show you a, a little quick technique uh, which I used on one of the cards. Um, I'm going to show you how you can get some smaller quantities of all the in colours because my next sweet sampler is going to be the new in colours. Um, I'm going to make up the project that I sent out for you in your catalogue packs and if you didn't have one of those I've got all the measurements so you can replicate the same thing at home if you would like to. Um, and, and that's going to take us, I suspect, <laughs> more than an hour. But so uh, settle in for the afternoon. If you haven't got a cup of tea, make a cup of tea um, and we will get started. OK, let me just make sure I haven't missed anything else here. I don't think I have. If you haven't got your new copy of the new catalogue handy, get that as well, because I think it's much easier to see if you've got your own copy to refer to, isn't it, than if you're um, just trying to, to look at the visuals of my catalogue. And I don't think I'm going to be able to get the whole of every page on camera, so I should be kind of zooming in, well not zooming in because I can't zoom when I'm live, but um, pointing out uh, sections of the pages rather than seeing the whole thing. So you might find it easier if you can see the whole thing. All right, so I'm going to cover over the camera lens, move you down onto my desktop and we'll get started. All right, so change the camera stand. Um, try and avoid giving myself a special effect, which is always tricky. OK, it's not going to play ball. Let's try this way. OK, change the settings, put it back in the stand. <laughs> Louis, lots of fiddling. OK, I'm just going to move my microphone so the sound is better when the camera is at this angle. Hello, Kay. Thank you very much for joining us. 
Okay, I'm going to take the blue off the lens, although I might still have to adjust things just a little bit, so forgive me if not. Mary says, the envelope the catalogue was in is lovely. You're trying to think how you can recycle it. Yes, you got one of the foil ones, Mary, didn't you? <laughs> they were a mistake. I thought I was ordering A4 envelopes and they came and they were miles bigger and it turns out I'd ordered the wrong size, but they are rather gorgeous. Um, I had some very utilitarian ones and then I had some foil ones and mostly I gave the foil ones because they were bigger than... Um, than you can send large letter so mostly I gave those to people rather than posted them just to save the postage a little bit. Kay saying hello to everyone. I don't know if you can die cut that foil Mary it might be possible to die cut it and then you could make some fancy butterflies or something to add to your projects. Right okay let me get rid of this trailing wire because you don't want to look at that. Somewhere on my desk there it is I've got a little clamp thing to just pop round my camera stand and let's see if I can get that out of the way. I apologise if I'm wobbling everything badly. Let me just clip that out of the way. All right. Okay, so I've got at least three wires trailing, but I don't think you can see any of them right now. So that's that's better. So look, I've got loads and loads of little markers in my catalogue, um, but it's going to be much quicker to go through than you might think by initially having a look at that. All right, so the first thing that I ought to point out is that you should have inside your catalogue got one of these little slips here, um, which is amendments and additions. So for reasons best known to themselves, and I think it's probably just for layout reasons, um, there are a couple of items which are still available but do not feature in the catalogue, and that is the fine tip glue pen and the stamping spots. So I did pop those on an amendment sheet for you. There are a couple of other um, things which have shown as amendments, but I've only found that out today. And I was supposed to put a notebook, uh, a notebook, and uh, a marker in here just so I could easily find them for you. There we go. So you might just want to make a note that for the Garden Bird Houses stamp set, which is this one on page 107. Um, a couple of the images are not correct. If you would like the correct imagery, if this is a set that you've been thinking about getting, let me know and I will email you a photograph of the correct imagery. So that I'm afraid is a mistake. And there is one other thing which I've just got to again, I really, really should have put a marker in here, shouldn't I? Rather than just flicking through. Hopefully I can find it fairly quickly here here we go page 127 number five it's the hand penned memories and more cards and envelopes which is this photograph here and the information says that you get envelope liners and you do not <laughs> okay the envelopes are beautiful and printed as are the cards but you don't get envelope liners so I've just crossed that out in my catalogue. So I'm sorry I couldn't include that on your amendment sheet but um, we weren't told about that until this morning so that is that that's the uh, omissions and the amendments but everything else in the catalogue should be correct so I'm just going to show you first of all where to find a few things so I've marked those with little or yellow tabs so I've turned to page four and I want you to just be aware that there are some icons that are used in the catalogue and I've just squashing against my iPad. Let me make a bit more space, that's better. These little icons down the bottom of the page, um, if you've got a really good stash of stamping up things and you're only really interested in what's new, that little N next to a product is going to show you that it's new. And then we've got a couple of icons for some of our special kinds of stamps, reversible stamps, where you can stamp using either side of the stamp itself and get two different images, are shown here with a little mirror image flower. Distinctive stamps, um, you stamp with one image but the ink goes on um, in greater or lesser quantities which gives you shading, so those distinctive stamps are shown there. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of projects in the catalogue but if you're looking for something that's quick and easy look for this little clock symbol. 
and if you are looking for stamp sets in other languages um, if you see these little language icons next to them then you know that it's possible to order that stamp set in a different language um, and if you want it in a different language get in touch with me and I can give you the details of uh, what the item number is but in this catalogue um, there only only gives you the item numbers for English but you know some stamp sets are available also in French German and Dutch so that's those little icons then moving on on page eight um, there are some new kits and I've only seen them this morning I've just ordered myself three of them um, they are absolutely lovely some of them include a stamp set and a little ink spot some of them include no stamping at all and they're just put the kits together and they start at a very competitive uh, 11 pounds something which is fantastic some are card kits some are boxes some are cards in boxes they're absolutely lovely um, they haven't put them in the catalog because what they want to do is encourage you to have a look at the kit section of my online store and that way they will only be showing what's actually available with no situations where things have gone on to back order because they're not in the warehouse um, and so on and they also get the flexibility to add kits to it at very short notice throughout the year so that's something a little bit new always it's been you know what's in the catalogue and we get the odd thing um, perhaps that's available on a promotion but generally something like a kit is in the catalogue for the whole year so that's quite interesting on the opposite page here you've got some more pictures of some of the kits that are currently uh, that are going to be available and you'll be able to see these online from the 1st of June I've been able to order some early because I'm a demonstrator so I will be sharing those with you before then so that's just a quick note about kits um, page 119 lots of people ask me all all year round um, can I sell my cards can I sell my gift bags and so on um, that I've made with Stamping Up things and the short answer is yes absolutely. Um, Stamping Up's angel policy just requires that you stamp the back of your work or the front come to that but for most people it's the back with a stamp that you've bought from Stampin' Up which says copyright Stamping Up. So we always have a set in the catalogue which has got one of those in it and this is the current one it's, it's a new um, newish set I don't have this I've got a couple of old ones um, you can use any set you don't have to buy a new one every year or anything like that but as long as you have a stamp you've purchased from Stamping Up that says copyright Stamping Up then you can sell anything you like um, you can't um, photocopy or digitally um, adapt any of the images but if you've hand stamped things then that's not a problem at all all right um, other little things to point out to you as my next yellow marker so pages one two two to one two three we've got the color collections here so here are all 50 of our colors plus the basic ones like black white and vanilla and down at the bottom of page one two three i'm sure you've had a look here already you'll see these beautiful new in colors and i'm going to be showing you those up close and personal very shortly Right, where's my next little marker? Here it is. Um, this page is often missed in the catalogues and I think they've made it a little bit clearer this time around. This is page 126 and it shows you all the assortments and bundles of the colour items if you like. So if you don't want to buy a pack of card in just one colour, you'd rather have an assorted pack, then this is where you'll find them. So they come in all four colour families, for instance, in both A4 and 12 by 12, and also in the two sets of in colours. So these are the colours that we just get for two years each. So we've got last year's set, well, they were new last year, which we've got for this year as well, and then we've got the new set this year, which we've got for two years. And you can get assortments and bundles in um, card, in ink pads. Um, you can get the ink refill bottles in the main colour collections as a set of 10. Uh, you can get the marker assortments as well for all the colour families. So those are all on this page. There we go. 
page 135 there is lots of new stuff on here um, you will probably have seen the rainbow glimmer paper previously um, but we've got ombre paper we have shimmer vellum in the new colors which i'm going to show you soon and we've also got gold and rose gold metallic paper um, the other items on there have carried over but those are new things and they are lovely we have a lot of new embellishments and you'll find those on pages 142 to 3. Um, some of them you will recognise, there's some old friends on here, but there are also some new things. Um, I'll be showing you the in colour faceted jewels, they're absolutely beautiful. But there are all kinds of other pretty things on there as well. There are two sections in here for bundles. There's one section for a bundle of stamps and a punch. So this is where you buy the two coordinating items together with one code and that saves you 10% on ordering the punch and the stamps but separately. And I just really wanted to point this out to you because all the samples here are different ones to the ones that you will see back in the catalogue. Um, so here we go i mean this is this is an old one dragonfly garden uh well old it was in, it's currently in the spring and summer catalog but it's carried over um many of you will have seen this already um but this sample here is not the same sample you'll see back in the catalog where the stamp set is shown so it's worth knowing that these are new samples so that's page 147 and it's the same on page 157 where we have the bundles of dies and stamps so again here there are new samples, so there is just so much inspiration in here. It's wonderful. Marjorie's joined us. Hi, Marjorie. Lovely to have you. All right, page 169 um, is just a reminder, really. There's not a huge amount of information on this page, but just that if you want to really maximise the value you're getting, joining Stamping Up is always a great deal. And at the moment, we have a joining promotion, um, which will get you £55 worth of free products, and you get to choose them. You pay £99, but you choose £154 worth of products, which is £55 free. So if you've been going through the catalogue and thinking I've got a really long wish list that is a great way to get some of it without having to pay for it and after that for as long as you stay a demonstrator then you will get a, a discount uh, on everything you buy from the catalogue so if you'd like to know more about that you can go to my website which is sallybowman.stampinup.net or you can just drop me an email um, and I can tell you more about it or give me a call I'm always happy to chat it through with you and there is a special offer at the moment i've just turned over to page 170. if you um back in the days <laughs> where we could all meet face to face hosting a stamping party was a, a fun thing to do with your friends at the moment we can't do that but you could still show your catalog to friends and family and if they would like to order and you would like to order, if your order reaches £150, you will automatically get some free products. You'll get 10% of the value of that total order in free products. Um, and up until the 14th of June, there is an, a special offer where if that big order is £200 or more, um, then as well as getting the 10% of free products, which would be £20 worth if the order was £200, Stamping Up will give you an extra £20 worth of free products. So that's £40 for free in all on um, an order which is £200 or more. So the shipping on that will cost you £4.95, but it's still a, a great deal. Um, if you receive my newsletter, I put the wrong date in that last Friday. I will be correcting it in this week's newsletter. Um, I said it only lasted until the end of May, this offer, but it actually lasts into June, which is even better. Um, if you'd like to know more about that, let me know. You know, I want you to absolutely get the most you can for your money. And then finally, um, there are two different indexes in here. The first one on page 172 is the stamp sets, and these are done alphabetically. Um, and as well as the name of the stamp set, it gives you the item number and it gives you the cost and where you can find it, which page. So if you've seen me post a project of something and I've mentioned a stamp set you can look it up in here much more easily than paging through the catalogue 
and on page 175 there is an accessories index so if you're looking for adhesives for instance it'll tell you which page they're on or if you're looking for ribbon it'll tell you which page it's on so that again can be a quick way of finding what you're looking for hello Lorraine lovely to have you thank you for joining us all right, so that's a very quick catalogue tour, where to find things. If you've had the catalogues before, it's not hugely different. So hopefully that you will find that that is very, very easy. Now, I promised to show you some of my favourite things. Um, so if they're my favourites, you are going to be seeing me using them quite a lot. I'm actually going to fold this cover back I think because I've got my, you can't see it, but I've got my phone stand just here um, and I keep banging into it when I try and put the whole catalogue flat. Um, on Wednesday, tomorrow, um, I will be showing you this in much more detail but I love trees and this paper here, which is also shown at the end of the catalogue, um, where all the designer series paper is, is absolutely stunning. So uh, I'll show you that in much more detail tomorrow. This stamp set is beautiful too, although I don't actually have it, but, um, but it is very lovely. So that's page 11, gorgeous paper. Come back tomorrow and I'll show you it properly. Page 18, um, if you like to make calendars or if you like to make um, journal pages, if you like to scrapbook and put the dates of when, you, when the photographs were taken, um, anything like that, then this is an absolutely brilliant stamp set. It's called Days to Remember. Um, it's got the months of the year and it's got um, the initials for all the days of the week. It's got the dates. What's really clever about it is that you can actually make a calendar for each month of the year and you can stamp it so that the correct date is under the correct day. Um, you'll obviously know that different months are different lengths, you'll know that months start on different days of the week, um, but the way these has been arranged will allow you to stamp this correctly every time. I haven't got this yet but I am going to get it because I just think it's so clever and I can't wait to have a play with that. Right, the next thing I'm going to show you is page 28. Now, you'll see this again in more detail on Friday. If you come back at two o'clock on Friday, this is the Pansy Petal Suite. It's absolutely beautiful, beautiful. Whether you choose to stamp it or whether you die cut or whether you cut the paper out because the, some of the dies fit some of the paper, it's just absolutely beautiful. <coughs> oh, excuse me, coughing all over you. So I won't say anything more than have a good look at this. It's lovely. There are lots of samples in here. It's really, really beautiful. I'm also doing a class using um, this in July. So look out for more details of that. And you can always drop me an email and ask to be notified um, once I've got the details finalised. And my email is handmade at home. That's all one word, handmade at home. And then at, which is the little squiggly at, hotmail co.uk. I've actually got that typed out and I will lay it out on the desk in a little while. So page 42, you may remember from the um, January to June mini catalogue, this die was new and this is one die which cuts out lots and lots and lots of labels and it comes with a stamp set called Many Messages here which is one large stamp and the idea is you stamp once, you cut once and then you end up with all these different messages. It's absolutely fabulous. And what's new is that they've given us a second stamp which coordinates with the same die but has some different words on it. I really like this one, Love and Hugs. I also like this one, Just Breathe. <laughs> <laughs> and there are all sorts of other ones as well. So that's a really, really nice stamp set. Um, and I absolutely love this die. Sometimes I use it just to cut out plain labels and I stamp on them at a later date. Um, I've stamped the die and cut them out in various colours, which I keep in little cello bags. So I've got a stamped label already. I've also cut them out in things like gold foil and kept them by me so that I can use those in conjunction with a stamped label on ordinary cards. So it's a fantastic die, that one. 
So another favourite of mine, which I have ordered this morning, is this set here, Biggest Wish. Sometimes it's really nice to have a large scale greeting. Um, you can use it on its own on the card front, or you can use it in conjunction with um, other design elements. And I just think this one is really, really fun. So you've got happy birthday in big blocks, block capitals. You've got happy birthday in this lovely curly handwritten font. And of course you can use them separately because they are individual stamps. So I could have happy in block letters and then birthday handwritten or swap them around the other way. Um, and then you've also got hello friend and you've got thanks. So you can mix and match those. Um, I think that's going to be really, really useful. Okay, page 78. I'm just going to have some of my tea. So this is the Flowers of Friendship bundle and I'm featuring this on Thursday. Um, I'm doing a live at 12 noon on Thursday here. So I will be showing you this in much more detail, but I do really love um, a stamp and punch bundle because a punch is so quick and easy to use. And these are really pretty sketch style flowers. I like the words in here. Um, there are lots of different flowers. There's big ones, there's small ones, and you can see a picture of the punch here as well. And then at the bottom, you can see that it punches out um, leaves and flowers. It's really lovely. So come back here on Thursday and I'll show you that in much more detail, but it's definitely a favourite of mine already. On page 88, I just wanted to point out that there are Christmas things in the catalogue. <laughs> There's a whole section of Christmas starting on page 88. There are some old friends here and there are some new things as well. Um, I don't really start thinking about Christmas until about, well, I think about it in August, ready for classes and things in September. But I know some people like to craft for Christmas all year round. Some people start in July. And I just want you to know that there are some Christmassy things in here. There will be another mini catalogue later in the year, which is a seasonal one. So there'll be much more in the way of Christmas things in that, as well as autumn and Halloween and other seasonal things. But um, it's here if you need it. wrote myself a note and I'm just having a look oh yeah that's fine I have nothing 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 on there that I haven't said um I absolutely cannot wait to get the expressions in ink suite which is on page 96 um, for those of you that don't know I love to do mixed media work and I love to do inky techniques and this looks really interesting because the stamps in particular, but also the papers, have kind of done that already. So it's got a look of, of almost alcohol inks on uh, used on glossy card or acetate or even Upo paper, which is like a synthetic paper, um, which doesn't absorb the ink. The ink kind of moves on the surface. So that's what this looks like. So I think this is going to be fantastic for creativity, for getting those looks, but without it being quite as messy as sometimes it can do. Um, I haven't got this yet, but I will be getting it. And once I do, I promise I will share it with you. But I just wanted to show you that because it's definitely one of my favourite things. I do love florals and this colour and contour bundle on page 98 has got some very pretty florals in it um, but I particularly like it for the dies. There's a very small picture of the dies down here. They cut out the two flowers um, but you've also got a lot of beautiful layers here with scalloped edges and there some of them have got a uh, stitched a stitched look to them and you've also got this long one here which cuts out um, a scalloped border on something. You can see the picture at the top, they've, they've used the scallops on that and you can see here that there are layers, it's really lovely. Um, so I would encourage you to have a look at that. The font on the word stamps is beautiful too, but it, it's a really, really lovely bundle that one. 
Belinda's saying that she can't wait for the expressions in ink. She, hers is on the way. Belinda is a demonstrator in my team and so she could um, order some things early. But just like me, we couldn't order this one early, but she has ordered this morning. So I look forward to seeing what you create with that, Belinda. Okay, two more favourites to show you. This is something else that I don't yet have, but I think it's going to be really interesting to play with. So this is a stamp set and die bundle called All Squared Away. And the stamps are four patterns in a block. There are some great words in here as well. And then the dies cut out um, kind of like a silhouette, a cutaway silhouette. So the edges are cut away, but then you're left with a card silhouette. And then you can layer the two together. So I think the samples here give you much more idea than my rather clumsy <laughs> explanation. So you can stamp the blocks on their own, or you can die cut the square blocks and layer them on top. You can then die cut those and then add extra shapes because you've got separate dies which cut some of these flower and shape elements that you can then layer on top. So it's the same shapes, but as a separate individual die rather than just in the square, which I just think is, is really, really clever. So that looks a lot of fun. And then, oh, I've put them. My last one was just a marker, just to show you a bigger picture of that beautiful tree paper there. So yeah, come back tomorrow for a better look at that. So that was a very quick whiz through what you can find where in the catalogue and some of my favourite things. So if you've got questions, do please ask me. But I'm going to move on and show you some new colours. I'm just pulling them out of some little cello bags. So this first one is my absolute favourite of the new colours, at least at the moment. Things change, don't they, when you start playing with things, but that's my favourite, polished pink. I'm going to show you this with some other colours we've already had, uh, just so you can get a feel for what kind of a pink it is. I also love Fresh Freesia. Sometimes I think it's pink, sometimes I think it's purple. When you put it next to a pink, it does look very purple. Evening Evergreen, which is a lovely, rich green. And I'm just going to move these up a little bit. Hopefully make sure they're still in shot for you. Soft Succulent, which is a beautiful bluey green. And then finally, Pale Papaya, which is a kind of an apricot colour. So that's the five new colours. Polished Pink, Fresh Freesia, Evening Evergreen, Soft Succulent and Pale Papaya. And as usual, the people in the alliteration department <laughs> have um, worked very hard to make sure that we have alliterative names for them. Now I'm just going to move all but one of those away. So here's polished pink. Now let me show you it next to some other colours that you might be familiar with. So Magenta Madness is a much bluer pink. Flirty Flamingo is a much more orange pink. And Melon Mambo is a much more intense pink. So if I leave those there, hopefully that gives you a bit more of a reference to see how polished pink compares with the other colours. Now I absolutely love pink, um, as you can see. <laughs> um, so I'm very happy to have another pink. We are rather spoilt for pinks at the moment, I must say. Um, but polished pink is really pretty. When I was a little girl and we went on holiday in the summer, I was allowed to have my nails painted. My mum used to paint my nails. 
and um, we were never allowed anything like, you know, black or red or <laughs> anything like that. But we were allowed just a sort of um, a colourless iridescent polish or we could have pink and I always went with pink. And this is just the kind of pink that I used to have my fingernails and toenails painted when I was about eight. Um, so <laughs> it really is like, like nail polish. So it's a very pretty pink. So that's the pinks. So here is Fresh Freesia and let me put it next to Gorgeous Grape and Highland Heather. So you can see that it kind of sits in between them. We have lost Purple Posy but Purple Posy was much paler than this but it's a really nice pale um, pale purple. Let me move it sideways so you can sort of see them from darkest to lightest as well. So that's going to work really really nicely with the other purples but it does also work beautifully with pinks. So here's Evening Evergreen which is, is just a lovely dark green but it's got a hint of blue in it. So if I bring in our other dark greens, here's garden green. Now I thought when I first saw it that it was quite close to garden green, but it's actually nothing like garden green. There's shaded spruce, so another evergreen type name, um, but it's a much, shaded spruce is a much brighter green than evening evergreen. And then if I bring in the darker one, mossy meadow here has got much more olive in it than Evening Evergreen has. So it is a completely different green. Really, really lovely. I'll show you the other green, which is Soft Succulent. Um, and this is a softer green. Um, again, it's got quite a lot of blue in it. I'll show you Mint Macaron, which is also slightly blue, but is much lighter and, and slightly brighter. This is Just Jade which we've only got for another year. I think I've used more Just Jade probably than any other colour in the last year. So this is um, a, a almost verging towards turquoise when you see it next to Soft Succulent. And then I'll also show you Pool Party which I think of as a turquoise blue not as a green but it's kind of in the same ballpark as well. So Soft Succulent is beautiful. Belinda thinks that Evening Evergreen will really come into its own come Christmas. I think you are absolutely right. It's beautiful with red um, and gold. It would be absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so that's Soft Succulent. And then finally, now I wasn't really sure about Pale Papaya when I saw it on paper but it's actually a really pretty colour. Um, I, I think of it as an apricot. Um, so if I put petal pink next to it, petal pink is, is quite a pale salmon pink. Um, so pale papaya is much more orange than petal pink. And if I put blushing bride down, which is a slightly brownish pink, then you can see pale papaya doesn't really look pink at all. It's definitely not really a pink. It's much paler than Calypso Coral. And it's not as yellow as So Saffron. So there's five colours in total, four other colours plus the new pale papaya to hopefully put that in some kind of colour context for you. this is a really a really nice colour it's not orange it's not yellow it's somewhere in between with a little hint of pink as well um, and, and quite pretty so what do you think what is your favourite have you got a favourite colour yet you won't have any of it yet other than the little bits that were in your project that I put in with the catalogues if I sent you a catalogue do you have a favourite I think polished pink is my favourite, but I do really like them all. Uh, 
Um, also in with your catalogue you will have had a bookmark and on that I've put you a, um, there was a punched shape which was in each of the colours and I also stamped in the ink for each of the colours because sometimes the colours seem a little bit different um, in ink as, as, as opposed to in card. So you've got some little sample pieces there on that bookmark as well. If you haven't found it, have a little look. And the ribbon that was in there would have been one of the colours as well. All right, so I'm going to move those out of the way and then I'm going to show you them actually made up into projects. So you may have seen my um, post earlier this morning when I showed you my polished pink card. Um, as I say, I do really love this. And Stampin' Up! talk about uh, the colours as all coordinating, so the card coordinates with the ink and so on. So you can see that um, some of the colours are slightly more intense, um, say the ink is slightly more intense than the ribbon than perhaps the paper, but it's the same pink everywhere. Um, I'm going to show you the stamp and die set for these in a minute, but let me lift this up because the top of the butterfly wings are the new shimmer vellum. It's really pretty. I'm hoping that the shimmer is going to pick up on the camera. Let me move it down. I'm busy pointing it out and I don't think it's actually in shot. There we go. That should be better. There's also one of the in colour jewels on there and it's they're faceted and they're also iridescent. They're lovely. I had to order several more packets of those this morning. <laughs> I could only order one early um, and I definitely need more of these. While I'm at it, this is the new bark embossing folder on here. I wanted to give some texture to it um, and that's really nice. It is like tree bark. Um, if you if you were doing a card with trees on it, it would look like tree bark. But if you're not, um, it's useful just for texture. It doesn't scream tree at you, I don't think. Okay. So that's the card in polished pink. Here it is in fresh freesia. That's the one I have the most difficulty saying. Fresh freesia. It just, it just doesn't trip off my tongue. Then I've also made it in evening evergreen. Thank you, Kay. I did enjoy making these, I must say. Um, soft succulent. And pale papaya. So it's the same card, just made up in, in different colours. There we go. I'm going to show you that stamp and die set, which is new. Um, they really are very lovely. Okay, let me move those out of the way. So the stamp set is called Quiet Meadow. I've got it actually all stamped out, which I'll show you. Um, it's cling cling rubber so rubber stamps with sticky labels um, I do love a set which has got a little bit of a distressed image to it so you've got these words here which look a bit as if they've been typed on a very old typewriter with a very old ribbon that's not very well inked so they're slightly distressed um, a spatter stamp is always handy and then you've got a pretty line art flower a couple of tiny flowers a bigger flower here that would be very easy to cut out by hand and then some nice words so it's a very pretty set uh, thank you Marjorie I'm glad you liked those and then it's quite a big die set and it's one that really coordinates with the stamps rather than cutting out the stamps so the dies give you different flowers um, so on here you can see that they kind of cut out silhouette shapes of flowers and grasses and so on and then there are a couple of labels and there are these lovely butterflies so one is a kind of a scene from above butterfly and one is a profile butterfly which we don't very often get um, and for me that really is a very useful shape to have so let me show you those actually laid out um, because I think sometimes it's easier to see this. Let's show you the stamps first. So here they are all stamped out. If 
I move that up I'm hoping it's always difficult for me to work out where to put things so you'll be able to see everything best so let's move that up there we are that's better so these two will fit on this tag here and this little love will fit on this little tag here and then these are the dies cut out so you can see you've got all these beautiful meadow grasses and flowers um, you could cut them out in black and lay them against um, a background you could ink a background with a sunset or a sunrise and then cut these out in black card and lay them down or you could do what I've done um, which is cut them out of watercolor paper and then watercolor them and I'm going to show you how I did that because it's just so easy to do So that is the Quiet Meadow Bundle. So you can buy the stamps and dies separately, um, but honestly, save yourself 10% on the two, get the bundle. I don't think you'll regret it. It's really, really lovely. Um, the stamps on their own are 20 pounds. The dies on their own are 35, and if you get the two together, it's 49.50. So you can find um, the stamps and the bundle on page 110, and just the dies, um, on page 160 so I do really really love these so I'll just quickly show you how I did the butterflies <coughs> I've got a couple of spares here I cut these from watercolor paper and when I was coloring in I was doing quite a lot of coloring as you can see because you know I I did all the vegetation and then I did the butterflies in watercolour paper and then I laid the shimmer vellum over the top so I had quite a lot of watercolouring to do so I did actually use a block with a drop of re on there which I will do in a sec uh, and show you but another easy way if you have ink pads you can just press a clear block onto your ink pad and pick up some ink that way um, what I did was I just dispensed a drop of ink onto my little clear block palette and used it that way um, because it's very concentrated that went a long long way I only really needed one drop of each color so then I've got my water painter so this is just a paintbrush with a reservoir which I fill up with tap water and First of all, I just brush water over my butterfly because this is watercolour paper, it works much better if it's wet first. And then I can just pick up some pink from my palette and just start to paint. Now, if that's too intense, I can just squeeze my water painter, mix some water into the ink that's on there and then it will be much paler. And then it's just as easy as painting the butterfly. Now I am not a watercolour artist, Mary is, she's probably cringing, I always think of you Mary when I'm actually doing something like this and think you're probably looking at me and thinking I have no technique at all and I don't but you can get a really pretty result without needing to know what you're doing with watercolouring. I'm just going to dab that, I added some more intense colour onto the wings and it's just a little bit dark but if I dab that there we go that's a little bit better so once that dries it will um, go slightly paler and it will also kind of automatically get this lovely uh, watercolour effect that you can see on the butterflies here slightly irregular um, you can see on the flowers in some areas I put more colour in others it was paler the same on the stems so that's all I did cut them out of watercolour paper so let me move those out of the way and I'm going to move that block out of the way because otherwise I'm bound to put my arm in it Clean that off, there we are. Alright, so I'm just also, as we're talking about ink colours, I'm going to show you the sweet sampler, 
which has got a little bit of most of the things in the in colours so if you would like to just have a play with them without having to buy full quantities of everything this is a really good way of doing it so the sampler has a sheet each uh, an A4 sheet of card in the five colours so one of each of those then you've also got some of the patterned paper. So I'm giving you, uh, it works out as a quarter of a pack. Um, I think that's right. I think it's a quarter of a pack. Two sheets each anyway of each colour and each one is different. So this is the uh, designer series paper for the new in colours. And there are four patterns. So each piece has got two different patterns, one on one side, one on the other. And then that sheet has got different patterns. I hope that makes sense. So you get two of each colour, which means that you get all the patterns in each colour. So that's ten sheets in all of patterned paper. And then some of this beautiful shimmer vellum, because honestly, it's just gorgeous. So this comes as 12 by 12 sheets. So you're getting a quarter of a pack of this, which is a six by 12 piece in each color. So again, if I can try and fan those out a little bit to show you, there we are. Those are just lovely. Again, I'm not sure if you can see the shimmer or not. I hope the camera is picking that up. Um, the ribbon as well so this is just lovely this has got satin borders and then it's sheer in the middle and it ties really easily so you'll get a meter in each color so you can mix and match that with your card and your paper that one's come unraveled I did have them all beautifully coiled there we go so there's five meters of ribbon one of each color and I've just dropped the jewels let me get those we go so the jewels come in a mixed pack mixed colors and mixed sizes so you're getting a quarter of a pack which is five jewels in each of five colors so you'll get some large ones and some small ones 25 in all so there you go that is my in color sweet sampler card patterned paper shimmer vellum ribbon and jewels and the cost of it basically i've just worked out the catalog prices and rounded it up to the nearest pound so it comes out at 13 pounds if you can collect it from me and if you'd like me to post it to you i absolutely can do that and the cost of a board backed envelope plus second class post is two pounds so that comes out at £15 if you'd like me to post it to you. My email address is at the bottom there. So if you think you would like one of these, in the first instance, email me um, and then I can tell you all about what you need to do uh, to order it. I can also send you a proper information sheet with everything listed out if you would like that. So that needs to be ordered by May the 28th. So you've got almost until the end of the month. Um, and then I will order everything, I'll cut it up, I'll package it up and it will be ready for you to either collect or for me to put in the post to you on, I'm just checking my, I've got a little thing on my wall, June the 25th, um, which should allow plenty of time, even if there are shipping delays, for me to tell you a sort of a guaranteed date for it. So I'm going to slide all that in here. So that is that. And then it's time to make a project with you. All right, so I sent out to you a very straightforward little project. Um, which included two of the new colours, um, one in the card base and the pattern paper, and then the other one was in the contrast card. Um, 
and I did send you out a little leaflet with some uh, instructions and a picture in case you wanted to just get on and make it or in case you didn't want to have to watch watch it live so you will have got a little sheet like this how to make up your project and I just made up a whole load of these in all the different color combinations and sent them out so I don't know which ones you ended up with but I hope you liked them um, I picked myself one at random so I've actually ended up with pale papaya again but this time I've got evening evergreen as the contrast and if you didn't get a catalogue from me if you don't have a demonstration would like a catalogue let me know um, but what I will do is I will give you the measurements here so even if um, I didn't send you a catalogue and a little kit these are the measurements so I will read some of those out to you so um, my card base is half a piece of A4 like that so I just cut it along the length and then scored it at five and seven eighths inches that is then the white layer on here um, which on this one is this one this pale green soft succulent is five and a half inches by three and three quarters and then the four blocks here of patterned paper the squares are one and three quarter inches square and the rectangles are one and a quarter inches by three inches so hopefully you've had a chance to note those down if you like that then i used the double oval punch to punch out the embellishment that goes in the middle obviously you could do all sorts of other things um, to embellish this but that was what i decided to do so in terms of making it up i think it's probably easiest to add the patterned paper on first so I have four pieces here and of course you know I can use whichever sides I fancy I'm going to arrange them on my card layer first and I don't know why I've got that green one there <laughs> I've got a pile of them on my desk and I've just picked up the wrong one there we go that's better okay Sally Sally what are you doing so I'm going to arrange these pieces on here and I have a quarter of an inch borders so I'm just going to eyeball that so the border around the outside and the spaces between the pieces of patterned paper should all be even but as I say I'm doing this by eye which I think works absolutely fine there we are so I'm now going to glue those in place turn that one over that will look better won't it <laughs> you want some one rogue pattern showing there we are and then when I stick this one down I'm just going to make sure that um, it's aligned with the square here so make sure the top edge here and here are both straight and with this glue I can slide my pieces and just make sure that they are giving me even borders and then I'm making sure here that my left hand side is even and that my border there is about the same as the one underneath that's not straight so I can slide it there we are and then this one finally here so it's quite a nice little layout to showcase patterned paper you've probably got lots of paper in your stash and the pieces are actually really small so you can go to your scrap basket and um, and, and pull some out uh, even if you don't have paper like this um, it will also work with colored card and you could play around with different embossing folders instead or you could stamp your card um, lots of ways you can vary this I'm going to stick that onto my card base first of all and then I'm going to add my sentiment in the middle
So I have Pale Papaya and Evening Evergreen for my colours on this card. And I'm going to bring in a sentiment. So I decided I'd use the one that says You're Too Kind, which is from Quiet Meadow. The one I used on this sample, which says Little Card Big Thanks, <laughs> which I really like, uh, is from the new Colour and Contour set. So I have my Evening Evergreen ink pad. And I gave you a couple of these little ovals just in case the stamping went wrong on one of them. And I'm going to bring that down closer to me in the hope that I should be able to stamp straight and centrally whilst I'm on camera. I can't actually get my head in the right place. Let's see if I can do it well enough. Yes, that's not bad at all. And then I'm just going to glue that onto the other oval. So the double oval punch is brilliant because you've got this plain oval and you've got the scalloped oval all in one punch. It's in the um, January to June mini catalogue, but they have thankfully carried it over to the annual catalogue. So we've got this until at least next spring. It's just so useful. I dig it out all the time. And then I'm going to add some dimensional foam pads on the back. You could equally stick this down flat, that would be fine too. some little jewels. You may have had different coloured jewels to me because um, I put in ones which I thought would work well with the colours in your project and as they were assorted colour projects um, you may have had something different. So there's some little jewels and then I have an insert which I'm actually going to leave plain because I've chosen a thank you stamp and if I leave this plain then I can write in what I'm saying thank you for. It means I'm not fighting that lovely dark green card when I come to write. I've got a white, a white background for my writing. There we are. So if you haven't already made up your kit, that's how I did mine. Were any of you crafting along with me? Okay. I'll leave that there just for a moment. And then I'm just going to bring the camera back round to me so I can say goodbye to you again. Does anybody have any questions? Is there anything you want to see again before I move the camera? You've gone very quiet out there. <laughs> You're probably all beavering away at your card. Okay, Lorraine likes the wildcats in the catalogue, but she's not so keen on the patterned paper. Doesn't like the colour of the tigers. I'm just flicking through to find that, Lorraine. Yeah, I can see what you mean. Here we go. The in the wild paper. We have got some some green tigers there. I don't. I didn't mind the yellow ones. I must admit. Um, but equally, if you don't like the green ones then you can of course stamp your own um, here and use the other side of that paper if that paper isn't doing it for you then absolutely don't use it use the other side um, and and stamp some tigers you know is, is my best suggestion in whichever color you think is going to be most realistic and then add 
the stripes to them um yeah I, I do know what you mean i mean green is is kind of a strange color for tigers isn't it <laughs> i suppose they've used some artistic license there i think that's all i can say really i wish you felt on something like this one here that that green was going to coordinate really nicely so they've included it All right, I'm just going to cover you over and bring you back around. So bear with me while it all goes blue. I'm just going to fiddle with my settings as well. Swap over the microphone. Unclamp my lead. Hopefully that is straight or reasonably straight anyway. And I just wait for my iPad to catch up so I can see. Yes, it looks like I'm there. All right. Brilliant. Um, so it's been so nice to spend some time with you this afternoon. Um, I will be here again at two o'clock tomorrow talking trees, tree paper, tree dyes, tree stamps. And I have some more projects to show you and do a bit of crafting live as well. Um, if you've got any questions about anything I've included today, please do let me know. Um, you can order from the catalogue now. You can send me your order. You can order in my online shop at sallybowman.stampinup.net. Um, I can't wait to see all the things that I know you're going to be crafting with the new goodies. Um, if you'd like to order that in colour sampler with a little bit of everything in all the colours, let me know. And um, I will look forward very much to seeing you tomorrow. If you missed any of this or if you want to watch anything again, it'll be sitting on Facebook, but I'll also upload it to my YouTube channel as well. I'm going to have a whole playlist there of all this week's live videos. Um, and my YouTube channel is also called Handmade at Home with Sally Bowman. So everything's called the same thing, which hopefully makes life fairly straightforward for you. Um, yes, Lorraine, I... I know what you mean about the jungle background, so I'm sorry you're a little bit disappointed with those. I wonder if you've got any of the tropical stamps and things, you can do something creative with that. Or um, I bet you've also got um, some tropical fabric in your stash because you make the most beautiful cards with fabric backgrounds. So I wonder if something there is gonna work with those cats for you, the big cats. All right, everybody, I will see you again tomorrow. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.